hey guys welcome back to my channel how are you all doing i hope you guys are doing well because i'm doing amazing so in today's video we're going to be talking about will smith and jada pinkett's open marriage okay <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to give you guys a backstory about who Will Smith is, who Jada is, their whole marriage. Just basically give you guys a thorough backstory. And this whole talk about having an open marriage, whether an open marriage is a good idea, whether it works for some people, you know, whether people should aspire to have such a marriage. I'm also going to talk about some scandals in their marriage, like the famous entanglements with Jada Pinkett and August Alcina, okay? And also the recent interviews where Will Smith has admitted that, you know, he hasn't been faithful to his wife because he too, he has been playing away matches, okay? <laughs> anyway, before we dive into the video, if at some point you realize that you actually like my storytelling skills, you like my face, you like the video, you like the topic, please give this video a thumbs up, it's very important, okay? Thank you. So, Will Smith, okay, is Williard Carroll Smith, that's his full name. <laughs> I just found out. Will Smith is an actor, a rapper, and a film producer. I first knew about Will Smith in Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and for me, Will Smith was my ultimate crush for so many years. Okay, when I say so many years, I mean so many years. I had a huge gigantic crush on Will Smith and you know I liked him so much. I like his sense of humor, I like his looks, he was just basically like my idea of ah you know the perfect man okay when it comes to people that we cannot get okay <laughs> and then he has done several movies since then he has won several awards he has also done music so will met his current wife jada pinkett on the set of fresh prince of bel-air she came and auditioned to be his girlfriend in the series even though she didn't get the part but that was when they met initially but before then he was married okay he was married to sherry and he had a son called Trey. So his first child is with his first wife, Sherry. I think they were married for like three years and they got a divorce before he met, before he started dating Jada. And then he got married to Jada in 1997. And they have two beautiful kids, Jaden and Willow Smith. You guys, I just realized that Jaden is after Jada and Willow is after Will. Like this is my first time ever, ever, ever. Like I was saying their names. That's when it occurred to me that, okay, their names are actually similar to their parents' names. Who knew? <laughs> And it has been so obvious all this while. Anyway, so they have two beautiful kids, you know, between them, while Will has three kids, okay? So, for years and years and years, there's been rumors that Will and Jada are in an open marriage. Not just an open marriage, it was more like the story we used to hear then was that they were swingers, okay? Swingers are basically married couples who decide to bring other people into their bedroom, you know, they decide to swing with other people okay while they are married they didn't actually confirm or deny it so i think they actually denied it at some point until recently when they both admitted to have been with other partners while they were married and everybody was like <laughs> We knew it. We said it. Anyway, yeah, they're basically called life partners now. They are not husband and wife according to them. They are just life partners and, yeah, and they are free to do whatever they want to do with anybody they want to do it with, okay? Let me just give you guys a backstory on their relationship. Will Smith comes from a Christian home and he was raised with Christian values where, you know, one man, one wife, you know, say no to divorce, you know, you have to be faithful to your wife, you have to get married if you want to have kids and stuff like that. So Will Smith came from that traditional Christian, you know, home where everything goes by the book of the Lord, okay? <laughs> And then, Jada comes from a more unconventional background where you don't have to get married, you can be with anybody you want, you can have kids with anybody you want, you don't have to be married, you don't have to have those labels, you're not labeling, you're not labeling anything in your relationship, you're just going with the flow. So she came from such a background. So when she discovered that she was pregnant with Will's child, because they actually got pregnant before they got married, she was actually sad when she found out that she was pregnant simply because she knew that she would have to marry Will and there was pressure from the society, especially from her mom, to get married to Will because she was pregnant with his child. And this part actually confuses me a bit because if she came from an unconventional background, why was her mom, you know, pushing her to get married? Like, wouldn't her mom, isn't her mom part of her unconventional background? Like, wouldn't her mom be like, you know what, you don't have to get married to him because I'm not married to your father because this or that. Do you guys understand my point? Anyway, so yeah, um, she decided that she was going to get married to Will, but she didn't want to get married, she didn't believe in marriage. She had always been vocal about the fact that she did not believe in marriage, but because Will was very traditional and very Christian, 
had a Christian background, she knew that she had to marry him, okay? And for me, I'm just like, did you have to? Okay? I'll get into all of this later, but my question is, did you have to marry him? Really? And according to her, she knew the exact moment she got pregnant. She knew the exact sex that, you know, she got pregnant from. Like, she knew the moment she finished having that sex that she was pregnant. According to her. And I'm just like, didn't you know anything about the, anyway. But didn't you know anything about the after pill? But anyway, it's not, it's not me I'm going to tell you what to do. But, okay? I just thought that for someone as unconventional as her, if she had the feeling that she was getting pregnant and since she was sad about the pregnancy i was thinking that you know she would have taken the money after pill the moment she discovered that she was unsafe anyway anyway that's not the story so according to her she actually hated getting married to him she literally cried her way down the aisle like she cried down the aisle because she was sad that she was getting married and i was like if you are that sad anyway they've been married since then but you know they had a lot of struggles in their marriage because of their different values and the fact that marriage is difficult on its own okay even without all those extra differences in values and whatever marriage is actually very difficult on its own because you are basically choosing to spend the rest of your life with this person who has a whole entire background different from yours even if you have the same background personalities are different choices are different ones and you know what makes people happy are different okay so that leads us to the famous you know talk from will where he admitted that or where he told us that basically him and his wife are not responsible for making each other happy you bring your own happiness i bring my own happiness and then we come together and build on that and we decided that we were going to find our individual uh internal private separate joy but her happiness was her responsibility and my happiness was my responsibility and then we were going to present ourselves to the relationship and to each other already happy that makes sense okay for me that makes a lot of sense marriage yeah your partner cannot really make you happy because a partner is a human being you know so you can't really rely or you cannot wait for your partner to make you happy before you become happy if not you're going to be miserable you are going to be sad okay so i really agree with what he said you both make each other happy individually and then you come together and make and build on that happiness okay you both make yourselves happy anyway you guys get the point <laughs> so um yeah he said that and but we kept hearing stories that they were swingers they had an open marriage they were not you know faithful to each other and then that led to i think that was 2019 or 2018 it hasn't been that long i think it's 2019 or 2018 anyway august asina came out to talk about how he had a relationship with jada okay and then Jada took hold of the narrative and went on her table talk show to tell us about the whole relationship. And on that episode, she had Will with her, so she was basically discussing her marriage with Will and she was exposing, you know, basically just getting a hold of the narrative and telling us what really happened. So according to them, they were not really happy in their marriage, they were having so many issues. And at that point, they were actually separated because they had had so many serious fights. And in fact, one of the fights was so bad that Willow, who was 10 at that time, actually came into the room and told them that, see, you guys have to, you guys have to stop this, okay? Like, just stop, you know? So their marriage was basically not really working out for them. And then at some point, they decided to go their separate ways, not not divorce because they said divorce is not an option according to will but they decided to separate from each other so that they don't you know like kill each other or anything like that so during that separation jada got entangled with august august is a family friend a younger guy like a way younger guy who was a family friend and came to them for guidance or whatever and then she started basically strafing the boy we actually became really really good friends mm -hmm. and it all started with him just needing some help mm -hmm. you know me wanting to help his health, his mental state. And we found all those different resources, mm -hmm. you know, to help pull him through. They were in a relationship, her and August were in a relationship while she was still married to Will. And then what did you do, Jada? Well, you know, I think from there, you know, as time went on, I got into a different kind of entanglement. I think um, you need to say clearly what happened. And I got into an entanglement with August. That's what I said. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> yes. A relationship. Yes. And when she said that on the Red Table Talk, <laughs> the memes rolled in. 
the criticism rolled in everybody was like how dare you what do you mean by that and i think what made it even worse was that will looks very uncomfortable having that that conversation like he actually looks physically uncomfortable like he was crying like his face was Basically, he wasn't a good actor, you know, at that point. He wasn't like, he wasn't a good actor, okay? The media, everybody was like, nope, this is not right. What Jada did to him is not fair. She's humiliating him. She humiliated him. Why would she do that? And yeah, it went on for a very long time. I even remember that the year after, when August was coming, like the month August was coming, a lot of memes were everywhere about Will in the month of August and how he'll be sad because it's August, you know, and stuff like that. After the whole thing died down, people just moved on as usual because yeah we have so many people's gist to listen to small people's gist will be occupied with all year round okay so people moved on and then not like totally moved on anytime they come into the picture people talk about them again but people moved on from that story until recently that was this was september just last month okay will smith granted an interview with gq and i think he has a memoir coming out was already out where he basically talked about his life, his marriage, his um, his career because he's preparing for a role, um, for a movie role to act as Serena Williams' father, which is Richard Williams. Okay, so he was pre he's preparing for that role. He's already act he's already acting. I don't know. So in that interview with GQ magazine, Will Smith opened up about his marriage, about you know experimenting outside his marriage, having other partners aside his wife, talked about, you know, seeing a sex therapist and, you know, there's so many things that he said in that interview that I was just like, mm, guy, guy, let me just look for the, the direct quotes because I was just like, I was like, nah, man, nah, brah, like, this doesn't sound right to me, but it's not me you're married to, but it doesn't sound right to me, okay? So, let me read one of the things he said. We have given each other trust and freedom with the belief that everybody has to find their own way. He added, and marriage for us can't be a prison, and I don't suggest our road for anybody, but the experiences that the freedoms that we've given one another and the unconditional support to me is the highest definition of love, okay? So this is where I'm going to tell you guys my own opinion about all this open marriage and things that, all, all these things they are saying to basically console themselves. I don't agree with it. I'm sorry. Um, everybody has their own opinion, but in my own opinion, if it's what people are here watching for, okay, if you want to hear my opinion, my opinion is that I don't agree with this. I don't agree with the statement that marriage for us can't be a prison. What does that mean? Like, what does he mean by marriage can't be a prison? Is marriage supposed to be a prison? Marriage is not supposed to be a prison. Yes, marriage can be a prison for some people, but the way marriage is designed to be, marriage in itself is not designed to be a prison. So when they say things like, uh, uh, we stopped calling ourselves husband and wife because of the expectations about husband and wife and the labeling and all of that We decide to call ourselves life partners. I'm like, dude, it's the same thing. For me at this point, they're just playing a game of semantics, okay? Life partner, husband is the same thing, okay? Life partner is also a label. If you say you don't want to label what you guys have, you don't want to label it husband, but you want to label it life partner. I'm sorry, but it's the same thing to me, okay? Because both have an expectation that you are doing life with this person, basically. Like, person is your life partner, husband is life partner, wife is life partner. So, by God's definition of marriage, your husband or your wife is supposed to be your life partner, okay? That's why divorce is, uh, is discouraged. So, saying that we're no longer husband and wife, we're now life partners, is, to me, it's just the same thing. Potatoes, potatoes, tomato, tomatoes, okay? Same difference. For me, it just sounds like they're looking for a way to remove the accountability that comes with, you know, getting married and signing those documents. I feel like saying we're no longer this, we're no longer that. It's just a way of removing those responsibilities from each other and basically doing what they want. You want to be selfish and you need an excuse to be selfish so you now start saying we're removing labels, we're removing this. At the end of the day, whatever you decide to call yourself is still a label so so another part that i do not agree with at all is where he said the freedoms that we've given one another and the unconditional support to me is the highest definition of love okay let me tell you something unconditional support unconditional whatever you're going to call that is not love to me okay love to me is being able to tell somebody nah you shouldn't do that okay you shouldn't be be supporting everything that somebody does because people are not always right okay do you get my point people are not always right your husband is not going to be always right your wife is not going to be always right you cannot support them 100 in everything they do i mean where does that now place you like 
don't you have your own i not your own person shouldn't you be able to say i support you i love you but nah sis nah brah you can't do that because it is not right it's not good for you it doesn't it's not, it's not going to work for us do you understand like you can't you can't tell me that unconditional support is love it's not okay that's why i always talk about people who anything your favorite celebrity does you're clapping for the person even when it is obvious nonsense you cannot See, okay, let me just, let me say this. All these people that are fan girls or stands, you know, your favorite celebrity is messing up, you cannot say it. You cannot open your mouth and say, okay, this thing person is doing is wrong. Okay, you don't even have to say what person is doing is wrong, but you can refrain, you can restrain yourself from applauding somebody for doing the wrong thing, okay? Do you get my, do you get my point? You don't have to praise them for it when they're doing the wrong thing just because you like this person. Okay, for instance, I like Will Smith, but I, I can tell you that the guy is talking in the rubbish. <laughs> Like I said he has been my celebrity crush for the longest time but I can admit that dude what you are saying does not even make sense so that talk that unconditional support means unconditional love it doesn't make sense to me at some point you are going to have to make a tough decision to tell your partner this thing you are doing is not good this thing you are doing is not right okay you are supposed to both hold yourselves accountable okay to me that's what a life partner is like we have a goal in this life, we have things we are working towards, we have a vision for how our lives are supposed to be. We're supposed to be each other's accountability partners, okay? So, yeah, yeah, I just don't agree with that part. Then another one that he said, I was like, mind blown. I was like, dude, what are you saying? Now, okay, like I said before, he went to visit a sex therapist. So this sex therapist was, you know, coaching him, teaching him how to go about his sex life and stuff like that. So she was trying to change his mind or, you know, his mindset towards sex. And she tried to let him know that it's okay for you to have thoughts about other women and for you to say, you know, this other woman is very beautiful, you know, for you to desire other women while being married to your wife, it is okay. It's not a bad thing, okay? And I agree with that part, okay? Surprisingly, yes, it's not a bad thing for a man or for a woman to desire other men, even though she is married to. I mean, even though he or she is married, to me it's not a it's not a bad thing because you are both human beings. Human beings have desires. Human being, you are a human being. There's blood, you know, flowing through your veins. It is absolutely normal for you to look at another man, look at another woman, and be like, hmm, this person is hot too. You know, there's even a part where he talked about liking Misty Copeland and um, Halle Berry. That means he has a type, okay? Because if you know Misty Copeland and Halle, Halle Berry, they are kind of like Jada and Sherry, which are basically like. All this mixed race kind of people is Bill Smith more than mixed or white or something? I'm not sure. But when he called Mr. Copeland and Halle Berry, I was like, especially Halle Berry, I was like, dude, you have a type. And obviously, that type is not me, but whatever, we don't care anymore. <laughs> And then he also talked about the fact that he had this fantasy in his head of having 20 women, traveling with 20 women who were like, you know, his lovers and stuff like that. But by the time the therapist and him broke it down, they realized that, nah, that's too much work. That's actually not as fun as it sounds in his head, you know. So basically, she was coaching him on his sex life, okay? Now, let me tell you the part that was the biggest red flag to me. And it's where she, he said, or she said, or he said, she said. Anyway, the quote is this. That was really the process that the coach walked me through to let me realize that my thoughts were not sins and even acting on an impure thought didn't make me a piece of shit, okay? Okay, now let's talk about this, okay? For me, I think the biggest thing I realized from all this, and I think I said that earlier, is that I feel like they both are trying to run away from responsibilities and accountability. They are both trying to do whatever they want within the framework of an institution that doesn't allow you to do whatever you want, okay? Okay. So, you cannot tell me that acting on an impure thought doesn't make you a POS, basically like a bad person. It does make you a bad person, okay? Now, nobody is innocent in this world. We are all guilty of acting on impure thoughts, okay? Let's not try and defend it. Okay? Admit that you did a bad thing and you were a bad person for however long you needed to be a bad person for, okay? Just admit it and move on. Don't try to gloss over it. Don't try to justify it. Don't try to water it down. Don't try to dismiss it. You were being a bad person when you were acting on your impure thoughts. Again, like I said, you are not a bad person for having impure thoughts, but you are 100% a bad person for acting on your impure, impure thoughts, okay? Because as human beings, as adults, we are supposed to have that restraint and that discipline that makes you know that, okay, just because I think something doesn't mean I have to act on it, okay? 
So yeah, am I preaching or am I not preaching? Okay, so I'm not even trying to be a hypocrite and say I've not acted on impure thoughts. I have acted on impure thoughts and I admit that I was being a bad person when I was acting on those impure thoughts, okay? It's like saying now, oh, I thought about stealing and I went and stole. But acting on this is not an imp it's not doesn't make me a bad person. Huh? Acting on killing doesn't make me a bad person. Huh? Acting on cheating, acting on, you know, deceiving people, acting on being a liar. Acting on lying or acting on, you know, doesn't make me a bad person. It makes you a bad person, okay? <laughs> if it doesn't make you a bad person, what makes a bad person? Can somebody explain that to me? So can somebody tell, call Will and ask Will to tell me... I feel like I'm ranting. Am I ranting? Anyway, whatever. Somebody should call Will and ask him to tell me what now makes someone a POS, okay? What makes somebody a piece of shit? If you tell me that acting on impure thoughts doesn't make you that, so what makes you that? What does a person have to do to qualify as a POS or an a-hole? What does a person have to do? What's, what difference, you know, aside acting on impure thoughts? Can someone explain that to me? Anyway, see, yeah, when I just read that part, I was just like, I hope nobody's looking up to this guy and using his life stories and his talk to, you know, live their own lives because it's gonna be a disaster. So that brings me to the topic of having an open relationship in marriage, okay? Does this work? Is it a good idea? Is it freeing? Whatever. I'm sorry, I do not believe that having an open relationship works for anybody. I'm sorry I don't believe it. I don't care how you want to explain and defend it. It doesn't work for anybody because human beings are not capable of handling the emotions that come with having an open relationship. Except they're not doing the open relationship right, okay? One person is always at a disadvantage. Always, I have listened to people talk about open relationships. I have watched so many videos about people in open relationship. I have analyzed it from so many different angles. I have listened to psychologists talk about it and, and therapists and marriage therapists that talk about um, dealing with people that are in open relationships. It doesn't work, okay? One person is always at a disadvantage. One person is always the one that is acting like it's all right, but it's not all right, okay? Sometimes it's even both parties that are just deceiving themselves. Obviously, in Will and Jada Pinkett's case, it did not even work, okay? Yes, they are still together, but I'm sure that by now we all know that length of marriage doesn't equal to um, health of marriage, okay? So let's not even come and say, but they've been married for something, you say, hey, go and ask your mother. Some of our mothers were married for how many years, but they are still unhappy. So it's not by that one, okay? <laughs> it's not by that one at all. So it doesn't work for anybody. Somebody is always at a disadvantage whenever people decide to open a marriage. And most times it always comes from one person's perspective, okay? And in this case, I don't even think it is Will's perspective, okay? Now that, that brings me back to what I talked about earlier, where Jada comes from an unconventional background and she hated getting married and she never wanted to get married. She didn't like the level of getting married, you know? I feel like maybe the, the um, suggestion to have an open marriage might have come from her and then yeah I, I'm, I'm just saying i'm just guessing i don't really know but i feel like it might have come for her and then will decided to you know go with the flow since it came from his wife because i wasn't sure i was ever going to speak to you again i know i know yeah like the fact that i'm speaking to you again is a, <laughs> is a miracle uh, i don't want to go through this no more yeah no i don't yeah. either yeah and I think that in that situation or in that instance where he's going outside of his marriage, of course, it will give him instant gratification. He's satisfying his flesh, satisfying his, you know, thoughts and his fantasies and all of that. I don't think that the satisfaction he gets from that is long term. OK, I feel like after he engages in it, I don't think he has long term satisfaction that he thought he would have from engaging in it. I don't think even her herself has the same long term satisfaction, satisfaction because she herself said it that after the entanglement with August, she realized that she's the only one responsible for making herself happy. In the process of that relationship, I definitely realized that you can't find happiness outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay? If she was doing what was really making her happy. I don't think she would come to that realization. I think that she would have felt, ah, this is really good. This is really working for me. Let me try some more. Let me go out some more. But she said it herself that even after the whole thing, she realized that, nah, this is not for me. I need to make myself happy by myself. Okay, so these are the nuances and these are the, you know, subtext that people don't read into when they are reading about, oh, Will Smith and, and Jada Smith have an open mind and working for them. They've been married for so many years. I don't think people sit down to really 
think deeply about what they are saying and the meaning behind what they are saying. People just pick and choose the things that satisfy our you know, thoughts at that point. For instance, things that validate our thoughts. If you say, ah, open marriage works, we start looking for things that make it sound like open marriages work, okay? Meanwhile, if you really think deeper, you'll see that it's not working for anybody, okay? I've seen so many crime documentaries where open marriages and being, you know, swingers led to the death of one of the partner. One person woke up one morning and decided to choose violence because they couldn't take it anymore, okay? I've seen people who tried open marriages and they broke up from there. They decided to go their separate ways from there. I've seen people who started having more issues when they decided to open their marriages. As in, they thought that opening their marriages would help them solve their issues, but no, they now had added issues on top of the fact that their marriages had issues before, okay? Anyway, all I'm trying to say is this. If you decide to get married, stay married, okay? If you decide that you want to open your relationship, get a divorce. Get a divorce and coexist. Get a divorce and call yourself life partners. Get a divorce and do whatever you have to do. The moment you sign that papers, the moment you have gone to you know church to go and say your vows or whatever you said your vows, the moment you have done that with witnesses and all of that, I think it is better for you to stay together and work to, and work for your marriage together. Okay. Now remember that what might be keeping them together, Will Smith and Jada Smith, might not just be the relationship. Let me break it to you. There are so many other reasons why rich people do not get a divorce. Okay. Sometimes it might actually be because of their kids, because they want to have that solid family unit. It might be because of that. But most times, rich people don't get divorced because of money and assets and sharing of assets and you know building an empire together and if it will hurt their brand especially celebrities if it will hurt their brand if it will hurt their you know their jobs or whatever they want to get in the future they might decide not to get a divorce and just stick together to make some coins okay um but that's it let me know what you guys think in the comment section does open marriages work do you think open marriages work okay do you have any example i know somebody who is an who is in an open marriage and they've been married for like something else and they are both very happy do you know anybody like that let me know in the comment section okay and don't lie <laughs> you must know them very well though or you tell me i'm in an open marriage and i'm very happy and you are telling the truth leave it down in the comment section okay yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this chit chat stroke story time stroke rants i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section if you have any other celebrities or any other gist that you want me to break down like this and I'll be sure to get to it, okay? Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. Mwah.